Welcome to Science, everybody. So you've made it. Uh, now it's time for the graphs. And uh, to save some time here, these ones can be a little finicky. I, I did them for you. So you can say thank you, Mr. Finnerty. And as I got to looking at our lab list here, this is kind of the end, believe it or not, of the, the really data-driven labs where there's a lot of numbers and graphing and all of that. Uh, yeah, so congratulations. You've made it through it. We've get, still got labs, but uh, they won't be as numbery from now on, if that's a word. So let's look at what happened for us. We had porosity with the small to the large get larger and larger and larger and larger. Now, that's a problem. That actually isn't how it should work. And that's at the beginning. If you watch the video at the beginning, I said this setup that we have is not ideal for measuring this. And it's not. Um, the width of the tube is only like that big. So by the time the beads like settle into it, so many of them are touching the wall instead of like touching other beads that that actually screws up the porosity. And it doesn't really show what we wanted to show. Uh, so maybe in future years, I'm thinking about things like if we did this in a big five gallon bucket or did it with like actual sand and actual pebbles, maybe those things would show it better for now. Yes, these are the numbers we got, but in terms of how it really should work, they're not accurate. Now we're going to deal with that when we get down here. So hang tight. We'll be there. Permeability. What it showed us is kind of the same relationship that as the beads got larger, the permeability goes up. This is how it should work. If you were to go dump water, just a cup of water into a bucket of pebbles, it would drain through quickly into sand. It would still drain through reasonably quickly. And then into something like clay, it takes a really long time for it to trickle down through. The bigger the holes are, the faster the water can move through. And this bigger the holes are is like the big question mark when we get over here. This feels right, but I'm going to show you that it's not. Capillarity or how much water do the beads hold on to, what our results showed us is that as the particle size go up, the capillarity goes down. And that's true as well. That one is that how it should work. The smaller beads have more available surface to hold on to the water. So the smaller they are, the higher that results. The small beads held on to about 10% of the water. The large beads having less surface hold on to less water, holding on to only about 3% of the water. All right, so let's look at what we got here. And I'm actually going to switch over to my copy of the lab. Mm -hmm. Let's blank graphs. All right, all the tests we did in this lab used round beads, rounded, and sorted. They were all exactly the same size in that container, a whole tube of 400 milliliters of large ones or medium ones or small ones. By the way, if you didn't notice, these, this says seven and it should have been eight. So I graphed it according to eight and I replaced that in your lab. Um, if you didn't notice that till now, no big deal. But if you were saying, what the heck? Sorry about that. That's a typo. Um, a student lets water through the two. All right. I want you guys to figure these out. So this is basically the, the three answers on here are the three things we studied in this lab, right? So I want you to tell me, if a student does this, what are they testing? If a student does this, what are they testing? That'll be, you guys can figure that out. All right, my results. Um, so relationship questions. We're going to answer these all as relationship questions, where we always start with as, and then we say the first thing. Oh, I reversed them. Man, two typos in this lab. This lab is messy. We're going to want to say particle size first. As particle size increases... And according to my results, permeability did what? Oops, I'm not looking at the, uh, nailing it this morning, guys, crushing it. So permeability as particle size increased, it increased. Down here, same question, only we're switching to capillarity. So as particle size increases capillarity did what as particle size increases capillarity went down a capillarity decrease with bigger particles and now porosity 
as particle size increases porosity according to my results which again I'm telling you aren't exactly right uh, they have it increasing how it should work and this is important how it should work permeability as particle size increases this is how quickly water goes through so if you have bigger holes and less of them the water can go through faster so as it increases permeability increases what we call a direct relationship as one thing goes up the other thing goes up capillarity as particle size increases again we had correct results on this one as well the more surface is available with the small particles the less the more it's going to hold on to so as we get bigger capillarity decreases porosity here's the interesting one particle size increases what happens to porosity now our results say that it increased but that's not correct so should it decrease? Well, what's going on here? Again, let's go back to what porosity is. This is important. What porosity is, is how much space is there in between the beads. And if I were to go, I'm not gonna color at all because it would take forever, but if I were to go and like color how much space there is as a ratio compared to how much bead there is, what's that percentage, right? So what if there were big beads or small beads? Well, you could almost play with the zoom on this and, and Find the answer for yourself. If this little photo, this little image has a porosity of X, if I make the image bigger, does the porosity change? The beads got bigger, but the ratio of how much space there is to how many beads there are stays the same. That really shouldn't change. Okay? It's a complicated idea, but this image has the same porosity as this image. Even though these beads look smaller and these beads look bigger, the ratio of space to bead remains the same. So what should happen with porosity is a complicated idea and is a very difficult idea to show, to demonstrate in this setup, is that porosity stays the same. So that ends up giving us one of each relationship. That is, uh, as the thing goes up, the other thing goes up. As the thing goes up, the other thing goes down. And as this goes up, this stays the same. Okay. I didn't have you do these little graphs at the bottom here. Yeah, we won't worry about it. This, this lab's deep enough. Let's, let's get this thing on the move, huh? All right. But when it comes to question time, should there be some sort of... Uh, set of questions that I come up with, which is likely, this is the thing here. This is real life. Okay. So what type of soil will be good for uh, well drinking water? Well, you want the water to get to your well quickly. So you want a high permeability. So maybe soils with a lot of sand in them are very permeable. Um, if you have a, a really clay bound soil, water's not going to be able to trickle through very quickly. So it doesn't fill the head of your well very well. Then if you turn on your washing machine, flush a toilet, wash your hands, and do a couple of things, the well pulls that water out, but it can't move very quickly through a clay soil. So the sandier it is, the more quickly water is going to, going to uh, work its way through. Down here, this is very easy for me to tell when people skip this reading, because as you read this, it's going to say things like, using a blue marker, do this. Using red, do this. So you're going to be doing some coloring on this diagram using the Kami pens. Yes, you will. What is the water table? Once you color, you should, people usually figure that one out pretty pretty easily. Uh, confining layers that don't let water through have a very low permeability. So what sort of materials? This question here is almost the opposite of this question. We want like sandy soils because they're more permeable for a drinking uh, supply for a well. Confining layers, which they like. I worked at a uh, on a project around a dump, a, land, a landfill over in the Finger Lakes, one of the Finger Lakes, like near Geneva, they would pack down layers of clay. Hint, hint, there's your answer. So that as if water trickled down through the garbage, it would hit that confining layer of clay and not work its way down into the surrounding soils. Uh, predict what you would think would happen if you pull water out of aquifers too quickly. That's, that's tricky. Um, I don't think we'll quite have time for it, but there's areas out west where they're really sucking water out of these deep aquifers too quickly. 
And what happens is that the whole overriding layer of land is actually subsiding because of it. If you pull water out of this, imagine poking a hole in a waterbed as you sit on it, the water is squeezing out, you're going to go down. Believe it or not, that the, the pressure of water in the aquifer contributes to the strength of the rock layers here. So pull out too much, you squeeze it down, and then you're never going to have the same capacity again. There's no way to get down there and, and make that aquifer any larger. All right, folks, you did it. Well done. So like I said, we're going to move in the, to, I don't think we have any more labs. Oh, we did all that. So we're going to move into some rock labs after this. We're going to do a couple more ideas and a test. But uh, hey, you pushed through all of the data labs here in your science. Congratulations. We'll talk to you soon. Welcome to your science.